What is going on guys? Vlad with eeenthusiast.com here and today once again we're going to be doing a weekly Q&A. So you guys seem to have liked the previous episodes where I essentially answer some of the most um, kind of upvoted questions and most relevant to the tutorials and I unbox a few parts at the end. So today, once again, I'm going to be answering the three uh, kind of top questions. And at the end, I'm going to be unboxing some of the new things that I got, you know, over the week through eBay, Amazon, or otherwise. Uh, but before we jump into the uh, questions, I really quickly wanted to re-mention that I do have a forum now available through my website, which allows you to essentially post the questions through a better medium, I believe, than uh, Facebook or YouTube. So, um, Again, just looking at a very quick post that was made uh, recently, uh, the person you know attached was able to attach a uh, document. So that allows you to kind of give me the code that you're working on and kind of address the question a bit better. So if you have any questions, any technical uh, question questions with regards to your own projects or to the videos that I've made so feel free to post them on the forum you don't really need much to register just a random username and a password but without any further delay let's jump into the questions for the week as well as some of the unboxings that we're gonna so do. the first question comes from the username by the name of Abinav Anna Haraman and he says really good video Vlad I want your help I'm trying to make a similar uh, graphical user interface but I have to use only three buttons I've got four main menu items and the first menu item has four more uh, sub items so I'm going to use one button for entering a menu and saving a changed parameter the other two for navigation and changing parameter values Please, can you help me out? Also, the code is not available on the link you have posted. Uh, so first of all, uh, thank you for, you know, providing some feedback on the link. I will get that fixed uh, shortly. But uh, to get into the question, so he's referring back to the LCD tutorial that I did uh, not too long ago, where I essentially showcased a menu through which I can scroll and enter different items and change the parameters. Um, so his application is a little bit different, not too much, but essentially he's trying to create nested menu items uh, inside of the program inside of the screen so instead of changing the actual values he wants to enter a sub menu and then at that level he wants to change the parameters uh, so actually I've requested since this question was posted I requested the person to post a much more detailed schematic of what he wants to be done and a list of the menu essentially uh, nestings and uh, what I'm going to be doing is essentially creating a follow-up video to the first one I did and creating a way to uh, for you guys to program a nested menu system so instead of having this you know motor voltage and then volts motor current and amps you'd have this for example menu uh, motor settings at the top level and then you would go into the voltage current etc so essentially creating a uh, nested system so there's going to be a follow-up video for the uh, for this for sure uh, so stay tuned, but essentially uh, this is going to have a screens and then a nested screens into which you would uh, navigate below. Um, but uh, another follow up is I do kind of uh, based on the applications that I've seen in real life, I was, I would expect you to have a cancel button, meaning that you should have you should still have four buttons, meaning that you should drill down to the lower item menu, but you should allow the users to come back. Uh, so I'm not really sure how I'm going to. Uh, lay this out with only three buttons. I would always recommend a fourth button to be able to navigate up. Otherwise, you're always forced to kind of go all the way down to the parameter and then save the parameter. Even if you don't make a change, you'd always uh, you wouldn't have any way to go back. So anyways, my short recommendation is to make four buttons, but I'm going to be looking into uh, how to create this this week and coming up with a video for you guys shortly. All right, so the second question comes from the user by the name of Christopher Lomo. Uh, he says, nice demo. Where can I download the wire.h library that is used for I squared C communications? So Arduino this is a question that has been reoccurring quite a bit. So Arduino has a set. So if you if you click on sketch up on your menu while Arduino is launched, you can go into include library. And here you will see all the libraries that are currently installed on your um, machine or on your software. And typically, so first of all, wire comes pre-installed with Arduino. So you don't need to um, actually go and search. 
uh, for something different. But if you do have this uh, need to install a different library, then you can go into manage libraries. And uh, when you search, so for example, if I do search for wire, you will see that it is built in by Arduino version 1.0.0 and it's already been installed. And if you have some different libraries, then all you need to do is essentially select the uh, correct library that you need. And then uh, obviously you can select different versions, but typically I would recommend installing the latest one. And uh, you hit this install button right here. So very simple, very straightforward. Arduino didn't used to have this feature, but now you have this library manager, which makes it extremely easy uh, to install any library that is referenced by myself or any other content creator. All right, so the next question comes from the user by the name of Chamira Wiccan Singh, and he's asking, isn't the gyro data in degrees per second? How come it's just in degrees? And then I responded to him clarifying this uh, data and he asked, can you please make a tutorial that uh, that is saying how to convert it into degrees as well as the g-forces to degrees. There's a lot of video tutorials in YouTube but nothing makes sense as your explanations. So first of all, thank you for your questions, uh, for your question. Thank you for the kind comments about my explanations. And um, so he's referring to the MPU 6050 tutorial that I did uh, not too long ago. And essentially the first part answer is that the data is in degrees per second when it comes to the gyroscope. And uh, the way, so the way you need to think about it is that uh, when you're rotating about around a certain axis, you're actually getting the rate of change in the grease. So essentially the speed uh, at which you rotate and thus it has to be in degrees per second. So just to clarify, it's not just in degrees, but it's rather how many degrees per second are you rotating around a certain axis. Uh, now, the accelerometer, of course, is reading the g-force that acts on the three axes, x, y, and z. And um, to answer the second part of the tutorial is how to convert it into degrees. Um, well, essentially, you know, you need to do uh, some trigonometry to figure out uh, how to convert it, but it, it, it's fairly straightforward, right? Because you have the g if your device is stationary and you have the g-force acting only into your, um, so to speak, Z axis, then if you tilt the module, you know, 45 degrees, then you should expect it's a cosine of 45 uh, times your one acting down. And uh, obviously on your other axes, it would be the same. So it's, it's really a trigonometry uh, kind of problem, but you should be able to dig a little bit more into this and uh, just uh, be able to calculate essentially the degrees at which your device is positioned depending on where the g-force is acting. So I'm not sure I want to jump into the full-blown calculation and video on this, but if you want to post this on uh, the forum, I'll be able to dig up some information and come up with just a mathematical calculation if you uh, still need this. So should be fairly straightforward, but yeah, if you have more questions, please do post it on the forum. All right, so let's jump into some unboxing. So let's uh, start off with this uh, bigger box, although I don't necessarily anticipate it containing any bigger items. I remember ordering some ICs, but uh, it's been, I think, at least two weeks since this got here, so I don't remember even myself what it really is. But uh, let's take a look. Let's see if we can get this out of the way. Um, it looks like there's some promotional items, which we're not going to read through at this point. But let's unbox this uh, package. Oh yeah, it's actually the LED strip. I think it's a, a pretty short LED strip that I wanted to try out with my controller. Um, so let's quickly get this out of the, out of the packaging. And uh, yeah, so it's just a RGB. Actually, I don't think it's RGB. I think it's just a... Um, it should be the addressable LED strip. Um, so I'm going to be playing with this in a next video. So it has, as you can see, five cables. And I think you can address each LED individually. I'll be posting a link below on where to get it. But uh, should make a very cool tutorial. All right, let's move on to the next package. 
Oh, I hate when they put tape. I have to rip it from the side. Way too much tape on these envelopes. Alright, so... Let's really quickly uh, read the description. So these are the SN74 LS04 uh, ICs. I'm going to be making some tutorials on uh, latches, switches, and hopefully working my way up to a uh, logic kind of logic tutorials and hopefully a computer tutorial as well. So I've ordered quite a bit of these. Um, I'm not going to be going through them in detail because it's not super exciting to see uh, kind of a an array of ICs being revealed. Let's see what else we got. What else we got on this? third package oh yeah so this is a uh, color detector actually so uh, I wanted to make a quick project on how to um, sort different things of different color so this should allow us to essentially illuminate it with uh, an Arduino or other microcontroller and then detect what color the object is so stay tuned for a tutorial on that should be pretty interesting let's see what else we got I have two more packages to go through and the next one is a lot more ICs. So this is the SN74LS08N. Uh, so again, 10 more of these. Um, and the links are going to be down below with full descriptions of what they are. Very nicely uh, packaged. Actually, I prefer when they package, you know, with, with these pins on them. So it's really easy to remove. But once you got tape, if I remove the tape from both ends, then the ICs start kind of going all over the place. So I need to store them in my boxes as soon as possible and uh, all right I believe that would be all for uh, this unboxing these would be the five packages that I received in the last week so a lot of ICs uh, there's gonna be some latches some flip-flops in there uh, some memory ICs uh, this pretty cool addressable LED strip and uh, the color uh, identifier module so i'm going to be making a tutorial on that thank you guys for, again for watching and uh hopefully you've enjoyed this week's unboxing thank you guys for watching this video if you've enjoyed the content make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons below i also want you to check out the description and a couple of links that i left for you with uh, extra content last but not least leave me a comment if you have any suggestions for next videos questions about this topic or otherwise uh, thank you once again for watching and see you next time